Our current curly language has two binding forms. It has let, which binds a variable like x for use in a body, and it also has lambda, which takes an argument x, which can be used in the body. And these are very similar, as we've seen in our interpreter. For let, it involves extending an environment and then interpreting a body expression. And similar, similarly, in our interpreter for a function application, uh, then that involves binding a variable in the environment and then evaluating a body. In fact, these, these two things, let and lambda, are fundamentally the same thing. We can see that if we have a let form like this, let x be 5 and plus x 6, it's actually the same as this lambda and application pattern. Here I've got a function that takes an x and adds x to 6, and I'm immediately calling that function with the argument 5. So 5 goes in for x and x plus 6, that'll be 11, the same as this let form. There's nothing special about the plus x 6, it could be any body expression, and these two would still be the same. There's nothing special about the 5 there, it could be any right-hand side expression, and of course there's nothing special about the name x. So really, any let of a name to a right-hand side in a body, it's the same as having a function that takes that name used in a body and applying that function to some right-hand side. And because of this correspondence, we don't actually need a let e form in our interpreter. We could change parse so that when it sees a let form, it just generates the same lam e app e pattern that's suggested by this equivalence. It pulls out the same pieces, the x5 and plus x6, but puts them together in a slightly different way with lam e and app e. If we do that, we end up with an interpreter like this. There's no let e in the interpreter. There is still a case in the parser that matches let, but again, it takes those three pieces and puts them together in a different way to generate just lamy and appy, which are handled by interpreter.